one of the most important things i have learned is that there is no uh, substitute for hard work and perseverance mm. so you know life will get tough and throw curveballs at you that you never imagined but uh, it's worked for me personally to identify what i love and just keep at it Welcome to Story for India. Today with us we have Sneha Khedkar, who is a freelance science journalist. Uh, Sneha has been a researcher before, and then she has changed her paths to become a, a freelance science journalist. Uh, welcome, Sneha. Welcome to you. Today we will hear more about her personal and professional journey. Uh, I welcome you, Sneha. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for having me here. And like. feeling that i am worthy of being here so yeah thank you for that yeah uh, so sneha would you like to give some brief background on uh, how was your childhood how was your upbringing and what has it been all about yeah uh, sure so uh, i was born in pune and brought up in mumbai and i have a twin sister and i come from a very academically oriented uh, background so both my parents have done their phd's my father is in fact a professor in iit uh, iit bombay and my mother became a full time homemaker a few years after my sister and i were born so yeah as you can imagine i had a very uh, uh, academically oriented uh, upbringing and i also had a very protected childhood i grew up in the beautiful campus of uh, iit bombay and like my school was a stone's throw away from home all uh, all of us friends used to like you know cycle to school and uh, after my 12th standard uh, i i did my 12th standard in the same school and then after that i went to st xavier's mumbai for uh, bsc uh which was in microbiology and biochemistry and then after my bsc i did an msc from ms university of baroda uh which i did my msc in biochemistry uh and uh, after my msc i got into like one of my dream programs of bangalore's instem where i was a research fellow for a little over a four, uh, for a little over 4 years and uh, so yeah i did have a very you know privileged and uh, very nice upbringing and i come from a family like that hmm i can imagine i think growing up in a campus is is a totally different thing yeah it's a boon <laughs> so sneha having said that uh, how did you find your passion particularly in science or research uh so like i said both of my parents come from an academic background and uh, uh they always encouraged my sister and me to ask a lot of questions like you know there was no forbidden question and in school i was always a very sincere student who paid attention in all classes uh but out of all of the subjects biology was my favorite uh and because you know i was always very fascinated by how thousands of things are happening in a seemingly simple process like say photosynthesis or respiration and i was awed when i realized that you know there are so many complex things happening and how a complex system coordinates so many things to ensure the optimal survival of any organism and i wanted to know more about this and i realized that studying biology after my 12th standard would take me closer to learning more about you know the wonders that biology had to offer so i took up microbiology and biochemistry for my bachelor's and one thing led to another and before i knew it i was part of biology research and living my dream life oh that's great that's great to know uh so sneha it's very interesting that how uh, you have changed your paths i mean i think they are very two different things but then i know they yeah. are somehow connected but uh, how was this your journey and decision making from uh, turning a full time researcher to a science journalist and was it actually difficult for you and maybe even why did you change your paths like that <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, you know i always knew that i will move into science writing because uh, like i said biology was my favorite subject in school but uh, english came very very close uh, after biology 
uh, as one of my favorite subjects and you know i loved writing and i loved the you know creativity that i could express while writing so when i chose to pursue biology i knew somewhere that you know my path will cross with writing again and in uh, my research life i wasn't entirely happy because you know there was constant stress i was on my feet all the time i barely had any weekends free which all affected my health you know both mental and physical health and i was diagnosed with endometriosis around this time for which i had to undergo a surgery and i couldn't keep up with uh, the physically demanding lab work so while recovering from my surgery because i wanted to be productive i started writing a review related to my research and kind of rediscovered my passion for writing unfortunately my endometriosis relapsed and i had to undergo another uh, you know surgery and it was around this time that the doctor made it clear to me that stress was worsening my condition which was you know one of the major factors that motivated me to switch lanes into science journalism uh, and not to say that there is no stress in this field but so far whatever i have encountered it's way lesser than it has been in the research field and again not to say that this was one of the only reasons i switched into uh, journalism but yeah it was one of the major factors and again i i don't think it was a very very difficult decision mm -hmm. because this was a decision many months in the making mm -hmm. so because many factors culminated into me taking this decision so uh, yeah and luckily i'm i'm surrounded by people who have encouraged me and completely supported this decision which has made my transition much smoother and easier so yeah it's been good so far nice i mean said that uh, maybe we can talk more about what is science journalism how is it in india and how are you coping it up with you yeah sure so science journalism is i feel a field that is still growing in india and uh, a lot of people confuse it with science communication but there's a subtle difference like you know as a science journalist it's my responsibility that when i'm reporting a scientific advancement or a policy i have to critically investigate what i'm reporting so mm -hmm. i have to gather different uh, opinions of experts in the field even if they don't agree with each other and i have to collate them and then convey them to the public and personally i have always felt that a science project isn't complete until the results have been communicated to the public whose taxes fund the research and uh, i think that is one of the major roles that science journalism plays so unfortunately there's not much uh, formal training for science journalism in india yet but there are really good online courses and the community is very helpful so yeah so are you also planning to take any uh, courses for yourself i would love to honestly but uh, it's a little out of budget right now <laughs> because so all that, of the good yeah so yeah, that actually sorry. shows that people are not aware and not like it's you know yeah. free, not even not even freely but it's not like publicly available when people are interested yeah. to do it so i think that yeah. the awareness um, maybe science journalists have to create to create that environment wherein they can pull out pull in more people to do this who are interested of course yeah so it is a constant effort in uh, you know in the field mm -hmm. to create more awareness about this field because a lot of people when i tell them i'm a science journalist they are just like oh what's that yeah so i think it's very important for us to uh, you know uh, create more awareness about this so i know a lot of science journalists in fact who have either done a course uh, from abroad mm -hmm. or they have done a journalism course in india Okay. but unfortunately so far uh, there is no uh, course that is entirely dedicated to science journalism but mm -hmm. hopefully in the coming future who knows yeah i think once upon a time it was something uh, similar to molecular biology or biochemistry there was hardly yeah. any awareness and now we see a huge difference that yeah. every you know small Definitely. college universities have it so we hope something yeah. like that comes up for this also yeah so do i <laughs> So Sneha, uh, since you mentioned about uh, the condition that you uh, had, or maybe you, a part of it is still in you, uh, endometriosis. Yeah. I think that is also something we don't see people talking about and you know suffering in pain. But how um, did you find having a chronic illness uh, changing your life and the outlook towards your life? 
yeah so i feel like like you said we don't see it very often mm-hmm. it's actually honestly very surprising because uh, right now according to the who 190 million people suffer from endometriosis that's like 10% of the population exactly so that's a huge number that's and definitely. i feel like yeah so i feel like one of the reasons we don't hear much about it especially in india is because of you know the taboos and everything that is mm-hmm. rampant against menstruation and periods and everything in india and which is all the more reason i keep talking about it because i feel like if i can help even one person you know realize that maybe they have endometriosis and seek the help that they deserve mm. i feel like it'll be very nice uh, if i can help them in that way so i keep talking about it and uh, yeah about it changing how i look at life i mean i don't know how to say this probably somebody who has experienced this themselves will understand but you know when you're lying on the operation theater table about to go under anesthesia or you know just coming out of the effect of anesthesia there's just something in that moment you know you realize the impermanence of life and That's just how temporary everything is mm-hmm. and you know i don't want to sound morose or uh, sad or anything but that feeling motivated me to live my life each day as it comes and to worry a little less about the future mm. and uh, one more very important thing that my diagnosis taught me was to advocate for myself because i have had the symptoms since i was 12 years old and i got formally diagnosed only when i was 26 so you know it took me 14 years to get a diagnosis and in this time people kept telling me all sorts of thing that pain is normal or mm. you know have children it'll help you and things like that so i that is something that my uh, disease has taught me is to advocate for myself to listen to what my body is telling me and get help you know have faith that mm. yeah it's not all in your head and get help if i think something is really wrong so yeah yeah i absolutely agree so coming back to your uh, professional life of science journalism uh, what do you think or what would be your advice for the people who are interested uh, in science journalism and want to start their career in this so like i said earlier also there are very uh, few resources in india mm-hmm. uh, there are no formal training courses for science journalism in india and the ones abroad are unfortunately quite expensive Mm-hmm. because they are all in the you know uh, european countries or in the us where you don't necessarily always get a fully funded position so uh, there are very few resources but there are actually many resources that are online that would help so i would encourage aspiring science journalists to check those out you know we also have a very vibrant community of science journalists who are in touch with each other on social media platforms we also have a whatsapp group of all of us and most of us are always happy to help people who want to venture into this field but uh, my number one advice would be to stick to it because i, I mean i only have experience uh, of freelancing in this field but through my freelancing experience i can say that it can get very difficult and if you've never worked in a newsroom or you know you don't know the dynamics of how a publishing house works it can be a little challenging so even for me personally i feel like i have faced way more rejections than i have faced acceptances but i also feel like all of the rejections have taught me something and i've tried to incorporate that into my future efforts so even when i approach an editor asking if they would be interested in this potential story like i said most science journalists are happy to help each other so the editors have for the most part been very helpful you know they've given me really nice feedback saying you know if you want to focus on this aspect that is something we might be interested in or they have directed me towards another uh, another pu- publication house or something mm-hmm. so it has i have always received a very nice feedback and mm-hmm. i feel like that has helped me grow even in, in my limited experience or in this field it's hardly been a year since i have mm-hmm. started uh, my journey in science journalism but it has been uh, helpful that way so yeah i think i would say that just persevere because it is it can get difficult but there are also good days yeah that's nice that's inspiring especially for the people who are going to start their career in this 
Um, exactly. I have a question. So, is there any preference uh, on what people are more interested to um, have an article on in their journals? Or is it is it like, oh, it depends yeah. on the journal or it depends on the people you are approaching or it's it's what like what you are interested in, you know, posting out in their journal? So, I think as a journalist, more than what I want to write about, I have to think about what people want to read about. Hmm. And again, you said, like you said, it is very, very dependent on the publication that I'm approaching. So some publications, like if say I'm writing in for an Indian publication, I need to focus on the Indian statistics mm. because it makes sense. No, yeah. but uh, if I'm writing for an American journal or, uh, you know, a publication house in the UK or something, I can't focus on just the Indian numbers. So right. it's even you have to tailor your pitch accordingly mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, publications accept very different kind of pieces so there will be one publication that's entirely focused on health and disease but one that is entirely focused on basic sciences to the point where the editor has actually told me we don't care if the story has a disease angle we just want to know the science yeah. so it's very very you know dependent on dependent. each of the uh, yeah it, it depends on the publication that I'm approaching yeah so so you will have to tailor everything every single yeah. time and you know customize your yeah. writing uh, depending on yes what you are writing and whom you are writing for oh yeah so yeah. I feel like the audience is very important it's very important to mm. keep uh it in mind that who is this article going to reach so for right. example there are also some uh you know some publications that are read exclusively by people in the field of science mm. so there you can use a little bit of jargon you don't need to explain each and every uh term in term terminology that you use but mm -hmm. uh for our newspaper or a magazine that is read by mm -hmm. people who don't necessarily have a science background mm -hmm. you have to keep that in mind so I think that's a you know it's a learning curve in itself exactly. to realize what is needed for which uh, publication and how to write it and yeah it's challenging but I find it a lot of fun <laughs> nice so also that I I can assume that it's time consuming yeah you you know, someone can't just approach you and like write an article till tomorrow morning. No, I think, I think people have to understand yeah. how much effort someone is putting when they want to communicate. Yeah. They are thinking of so many aspects in their head. Yeah. Like writing something, I think that has to be appreciated and, you know, given sufficient time so that they actually put up what they want to for the yeah. for their audience. Yeah. So, in fact, even when I come across uh, a study... If I find it interesting, my first thought is, okay, who will be interested in reading this? Exactly. And then I identify the media house that I can approach. Mm -hmm. And then I tailor my pitch accordingly. And yeah, so that's the process. But I still feel like, you know, more than writing, it's all of the work that goes into exactly. that writing that consumes more time. So, for example, reading literature, reading relevant literature. If I'm writing an article about something, I need to read a little more about the background yeah. and then I need to identify experts and then I need to contact them exactly. and that's not always a very smooth experience for the most part it has been but yeah. sometimes uh, it happens that they are just very very busy and they tell me that you know you've caught me at a wrong time or can you give me some time so it's these things that go in the background that I feel yeah. take up the most time before I even actually start writing the entire piece. Exactly. So There's a lot of homework yeah. to be done before you put it on. Yeah. 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 So it's all in the background. It's it's not very visible, but it is a lot of effort. Yeah. Uh, so Sneha, uh, very good to know about your whole interesting journey. So what do you think there are some of the important lessons that you have learned through your personal and professional life? Oh, interesting question. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I would say that one of the most important things I have learned is that there is no uh, substitute for hard work and perseverance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, life will get tough and throw curveballs at you that you never imagined. But uh, it's worked for me personally to identify what I love and just keep at it. Mm -hmm. and to have faith in myself because especially these days you know it's very easy to lose confidence in mm -hmm. ourselves because we look at social media and feel like yeah. everybody else is living a happier <laughs> life than us 
but <laughs> so yeah i think it's very easy to lose confidence but i think it's very important to have that confidence in yourself and for which again i would stress on the importance of surrounding ourselves with encouraging loving supportive people which again i feel like i have been privileged enough to be uh, surrounded by and you know these are the people who will stick with you when life gets tough you need those kind of people they are your cheerleaders for sure but you also need people who will stick with you when life gets tough because it will get tough mm. so these are some of the most important uh, lessons that i have i think my professional and personal journey has taught and i'm always open to learning more <laughs> lessons yeah so definitely. let's see what life has to teach me yeah yeah definitely so apart from uh, all of this what would you uh, like to do in your free time i do see a lot of books behind you so i think you are into reading oh, yes. yeah so so what are your other hobbies and what would you like to do in your free time yeah so i do love reading i miss the time when i used to read two books in a day unfortunately <laughs> that gone but i still do have a book on my night stand usually and i love watching tv shows because sometimes you know life gets so hectic that i don't want to focus on reading again i don't want to apply my mind to something so i can mindlessly watch some tv shows and uh, i make time no matter how busy i get i do make time and make it a point to spend time with my partner because and he does the same nice. because i think it's very important for any relationship Absolutely. and yeah so i also work out we do work out together also that's also one way we spend time with each other i love working out and i love practicing yoga because like i said mm-hmm. because i have you know been at the receiving end of not great health mm-hmm. so i started investing time and attention and even money for that matter into my health because i feel it's very important and it's something that is very underrated that and it helps both mental and physical health yeah absolutely so. great to know and uh, one final question uh, given another chance is it something that you want to change in your past or would you like take some other decision have given a chance another another time <laughs> i don't think so like you know i would not change even a thing because uh, uh you know i used to feel when i was really unhappy doing my research i used to feel damn it i should have gone towards science journalism only i should not have taken up science which but you did. Uh, when i sorry which you did so yeah no yeah which i did <laughs> but i feel you know at that time i used to feel like why am i here i should i would probably do better in some other uh, field or something but you know switching has made me realize that i feel like it's very easy to say i should have done this i should have done that mm-hmm. but the truth is that the grass always seems greener on the other side mm-hmm. and uh, so for example to uh, give you uh, an important uh, example is if i wasn't in the field of research for 4 years i would probably take double the time to read research papers mm-hmm. and understand what they're trying to say and understand their bigger implications to you know uh, uh, form a very interesting story so i do feel like research has definitely helped me and then there are editors who uh, want to work with uh, people who have molecular biology experience or working experience in wet lab and things like that so it does help in those aspects so i do feel like you know it, it all gets t- nicely tied together in the end and i feel like my journey has taught me a lot of lessons and i think i have tried to learn from them and incorporate from them so i don't think i would do anything differently <laughs> That's nice. That's that's great to know. A uh, great talking to you, Sneha. Thank you for giving your time and uh, having a great session with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Akshata, for having me. Thanks once again.